lights on. It's time to start Curb Cuts. Curb Cuts is produced by the Central Coast Assistive Technology Center, made possible by donations from Cal Poly CPTV and Slow Public Access, funded by grants from the Christopher Reeve Foundation, Go Forward, the San Luis Obispo County Community Foundation, For Good, Forever, and the California Endowment, increasing access to healthcare for all Californians. Curb Cuts is also sponsored by Max Superstore. And now, Curb Cuts. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Curb Cuts. I'm John Lee, and he's Paul Mortola. We're both of the Coast Assistive Technology Center, and we're here actually at CCATC at our demonstration center and loan library, and we're going to talk to you a little bit today about assistive technology for people with low vision. And this type of technology includes a wide variety of devices. And we're going to show and tell you a little bit about CCTVs or video magnifiers, uh, screen magnifiers that you can use on your computer, some of the built-in features and windows for low vision, as well as adapted phones and other uh, enlarged and talking devices uh, that are out there. We're excited to show you three individuals who have low vision and use assistive technology from our center here at Central Coast Assistive Technology Center. We hope you enjoy these three stories. We're here with Brianna Faust at Allen Hand College and she's going to be telling us a little bit about the assistive technology she uses in the classroom to assist her with her schoolwork. Well, my name is Brianna Faust. I've been going to Allen Hancock for about two years now. Right now I'm taking classes to get an office assistant certificate. I've been visually impaired, legally blind my entire life. I have what's called optic nerve hypoplasia and um, I have no vision in my lower fields and I can't read small print or th see things clearly at a distance. One of the most useful things that I have used as far as assistive technology goes is a CCTV which is short for closed circuit television. I've been using a CCTV since I've been in seventh grade and it's been wonderful to see them uh, evolve in their technology. Um, the one I used to two people to carry it, the one I use now, I can just throw it over my shoulder and go, which is wonderful. I also use Zoom Text, which is a program that's installed on the computer. It en enlarges the font of everything on the computer so that I can see it more clearly. It also has a voice on it that I use when I'm reading really long Word documents or things that would take me some time that would get my eyes tired. One of the things that I really like about this CCTV is it's extremely easy to set up. I can do it in about four steps. Take it out and unfold it, plug it in, plug the cord into the CCTV, plug it into the wall, plug the camera in, it's ready to go. The camera can swivel down. I can point it down at my book to read what I need to get out of the lesson. Then I can point it up at the overhead and see what the teacher's doing. And then I can look at my computer and with my Zoom text, I can follow along and do what I need to do to, in order to complete the assignment. I use the Zoom text at home uh, on our home computer, which is very nice. I definitely use Zoom text for Excel and things like that, especially for like seeing numbers or if I have to do a lot of reading. Uh, if I wrote a five page report for a class and I need to go through it and make sure it reads nicely, I can just tell Zoom text to read the whole document and save my eyes a lot of trouble. Same with, you know, emails or viewing web pages on the internet. It makes it really easy to zoom in, zoom out. I can change contrasts if I want to. I can uh, change the size. I, it's a wonderful program. The uh, CCTV that I received was uh, referred to me through CCATC and it was purchased through the Department of Rehabilitation, which I'm very grateful for. They've also uh, purchased some other adaptive things for me. When I read something, I have to be about 
an inch to an inch and a half away from it. My right eye is better than my left eye, so my head is at an angle when I look at it, which throws my neck out of balance. I usually am bent over. It takes me longer to do anything. I couldn't dream of following along in a classroom because I have no idea what's going on on the board, the overhead, anything like that. With the CCTV and Zoom text, I can sit back, I can relax. If my eyes are tired, I can increase the magnification. I'm like 10 times faster at reading and anything like that that I need to do. I know what's going on around me. It's a lot quicker and a lot easier. If I hadn't had this, I probably wouldn't be taking college classes right now. I highly recommend these uh, devices for anyone with a vision impairment because, you know, being legally blind, it's wonderful to go out and be able to achieve your goals, to get work towards getting a good job and living a fulfilling life instead of having to just sit at home and think, life has nothing for me. You know, life does have something for me and I can achieve my goals and if I need help, I can ask for it. So one of the advantages of CCTVs for people with low vision is that you can really increase the magnification to a level that is uh, vastly greater than you would with a regular optical magnifier. And we're talking about going up to as much as 52x with some of these machines. And you're able to see at that size on a much larger uh, surface area, display area, and that makes it much more uh, conducive to activities like reading. So what we've got here are a lot of the different types of desktop CCTVs from the CRT, the traditional CRT style, to the newer flat panel LCD, which are much lighter and more compact and easier to move around. The advantage of the LCD flat panel model is that they're coming on an arm that is adjustable so you can really get the screen height just where you need it and even tilt it to accommodate for any kind of overhead lighting so you're not getting too much glare on the screen. Don't have to deal with the flicker that you get with the CRT models and some people find them just a lot easier to read. With the CCTV, the desktop uh, style here, you've got a camera underneath the monitor and then what you're viewing, whether it's a newspaper or a book, a photograph, uh, you've got on an XY table which you can move all around. It helps you to track uh, what you're reading on the screen. So you can adjust the magnification of what you're viewing uh, in this case with a, a dial on the XY table that you can turn counterclockwise to decrease, clockwise to increase. In the middle of the dial and on a lot of these there's a button that allows you to change the color contrast. So now we're looking at a high contrast black and white which really makes the text a lot bolder. And some people, especially folks with macular degeneration, uh, may prefer the uh, reverse contrast, the white text on a black background. Here's another of the, the flat panel LCD models. And in this case, the difference being that the controls are right beneath the monitor. And you've got the uh, XY table, which can move around and can lock in place. In this case, you're, you can turn the dial uh, right underneath the monitor up and down to change the magnification. And again, there's a way to adjust the color contrast. This is another CCTV. This is the one that you saw Brianna Faust using, a very portable model. Uh, the camera is off to the side in this case. And not only you can use it for reading uh, close materials, you can use it for distance viewing as well. You can rotate the camera over and you can view something across the room, out the window. And again, if you're in classroom, of course, viewing the board. We're here now with Thomas Athanasian at Cuesta College at the High Tech Center. And Thomas is going to tell us a little bit about some of the assistive technology that uh, he uses um, as a set designer. My name is Thomas Athanasian, and I am visually impaired. I have been visually impaired since birth, but I use a wide range of low vision assisted technology to help me uh, both in my everyday living and also with my educational goals. I use a variety of assisted technology, especially now that I've started back at school at Cuesta. Um, I use various items such as a talking tape measure, uh, which can measure everything from 16 feet up to or down to sixteenth of an inch. My educational goal is to uh, become an MFA which is a master's in set design. 
in theater. And um, I use various programs. Um, one of the programs that I use is ZoomText Extra in conjunction with AutoCAD, which is an architectural program, which allows me to design sets for mainstream theater. You take those architectural plans and you turn them into models at a quarter inch scale model. And that's very challenging to cut pieces and parts, but using the talking tape measure, it allows me to measure out, you know, sixteenth of an inch. Lily is being trained as a service dog and she's about four years old. She comes out with me to the theater on a daily basis and she, for the most part, is really good about leading me back and forth to the bus. Um, she checks on me to make sure that I'm okay, you know, because the theater can be a dangerous place to work anyway. So every day there's a new obstacle, ladders in the way or pieces of the set and so forth. And the first thing I do is Lily and I walk through the whole place and whatever there's an obstacle, she watches and tells us what to do. Curb Cuts will be right back, right after these important messages. What? Please speak up. What are you saying? Do you have difficulty hearing on the telephone or any other problem using the phone? Use one of these specialized phones free from the state of California. Hello? Amazing oh, phones you. which flash incoming calls oh, and turn up the volume so you can hear. Phones with big buttons, easy to see and use. Phones that display conversation as text, allow hands-free calling, that remember numbers and more. These phones help anyone who has difficulty hearing, seeing, moving, remembering or speaking. Thousands of people use them because these amazing phones are free to California residents who need them. So help yourself, a friend or family member. Call 1-800-806-191 for the California Telephone Access Program. And now, Curb Cuts. As part of our lending library, we also have portable video magnifiers, which are a lot like what John showed you, but in a much smaller version. There's a lot of different varieties of them, but as you can see, their screens are much smaller, and these are used for reading smaller pieces of information, perhaps a um, price tag at a store or just a, um, a piece of mail that's very brief, but it essentially allows you to use it like a handheld magnifier that has the same versatility as the larger ones, just with a smaller screen. These units are kind of replacing a basic stand magnifier that allows us to magnify text for reading small bits of information. We have a moderate selection of the handheld magnifiers. Um, really, we refer individuals to the Braille Institute and their bus who have a very nice selection of different kinds of handheld magnifiers. We focus more on the um, uh, higher end of technology, maybe the more like the video magnifiers that we've showed and John has showed the CCTVs. Also as part of our demonstration center, uh, in addition to some of the uh, magnification kinds of technology that we have, we all ha also have some reading technology. This is a uh, scanner that's a reading machine that essentially reads any document that we place in the window. For example, this document has been scanned in our reading machine and by simply playing the play button, United Way of San Luis Obispo County cordially invites you to attend our fundraising event at Warrior, 876 Marsh Street. San Luis Obispo Wood. And that machine allows someone who really ha might not have the vision uh, to use a CCTV might benefit from a reading machine where any document, newspaper article, mail, anything can be placed on this screen, scanned, and then read back to them. Much similar to this device, uh, the Braille Institute also offers uh, a talking books program. That's a free program that they offer that many, many county residents take advantage of that provides them with a reader and with uh, current tapes that they can play and listen uh, to the books, which is an excellent service. And if you're interested in that, um, you can contact Braille at 682-6222.
Also at our demonstration center, we have a lot of large button and talking types of technology. Some of the lower end kind of technology, but really functional for individuals on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, examples are we have talking calculators that talk as you push the numbers. We have talking scale so that as you weigh yourself, the scale will tell you uh, how much you weigh. We also have uh, many different kinds of large button TV remotes for individuals that uh, need a little bit of help when they're using their TV remotes. We also have uh, several medical devices that are adapted for individuals with um, difficulty in seeing uh, traditional screens for these kinds of devices. This particular uh, unit is uh, called an autocode and it's a blood glucose measuring unit and you simply uh, place the, uh, the strip into the machine and it automatically starts up. The room temperature is 74 degrees Fahrenheit. Please apply blood into the strip. So now the device is waiting for me to test my blood. Once I put the blood on here, it will read my uh, blood sugar level and uh, will store it so that I can retrieve it as needed or if I want to bring it to my physician and uh, kind of show a track record of what's been going on, this machine will do that. Uh, this is a very low cost kind of device and um, we really like having these kinds of devices around so that you can come in and take a look at them. We also have some um, glasses that are for assistance in watching television uh, and um, kind of intricate work like sewing or um, any kind of fabrique. All of these glasses are adjustable for different vision levels so that uh, they can be adjusted to your independent need. We're here today at the Central Coast Assistive Technology Center Demonstration Center Lending Library and I'm here today with Dorothy Aranakis and Dorothy is uh, currently using one of our uh, CCTVs, our closed circuit televisions, for use at home as part of the Lending Library. So we've asked her to come today and talk a little bit about what she's using the CCTV for. I'm Dorothy Aranakis, a retired teacher. I've been retired for 20 years and have been leading a very active life. I have many interests. About four months ago, I had an episode of low vision and it has perseverated so that I needed help. When I had my disability, then I was completely lost. I couldn't find any means of helping me until I read an article in the paper about the Braille Institute and I called them and Kitty Crockett called me and she said yes she could help me and so she recommended that I come and get in touch with Paul and he came to my house and demonstrated how I could use this uh, instrument which is just it just saved my life because I was so inhibited by losing part of my vision my everyday activities I can do because I can keep current with what's going on I use it to read my mail I use it to keep um, active and up on current events and uh, and not only that now, when I write, I cannot see what I write. And so, by using this uh, instrument, I can put my checkbook underneath, and then I can watch myself write my check and, and make sure that I put in the correct amount and that, that the writing is online and legible. Some of the other things that I use my video magnifier for are if when I test my blood sugar then the instrument the uh, numbers on the instrument are quite small so I turn on my viewer and then I can read that and record it this machine is very adaptable and it brings normalcy back to my life I'm going to talk to you a little bit about some of the ways in which you can adapt your computer so that uh, you can accommodate for your low vision. And I want to start by telling you a little bit about the ways uh, that you can use the built-in accessibility send settings in Windows uh, to do that. One of the ways that you can adjust your settings in Windows is to go into the accessibility wizard in programs, accessories, and then accessibility. 
And in Windows XP, uh, this accessibility wizard lets you go through and it'll ask you questions about the text size that you can read. You can set it up so that you can use the built-in Microsoft magnifier with large titles and menus. It'll change the font size, change the scroll bar size to as big as you need, go with large or extra large icons, and you can even change some of the contrast uh, settings. You can also adjust the pointer size, making it much bi bigger, and you can adjust the width of the cursor so it's a little easier to spot. You can also go into some of the Office programs such as Microsoft Word, Excel, even Internet Explorer, as well as Firefox, and adjust uh, the magnification in there. So in Word, for example, there's a, a zoom setting where you can really bring it up as big as you need. And uh, browsers like Firefox allow you to really adjust the magnification on the fly. So I can use a keyboard shortcut to increase the magnification using Control Plus, and it's going to increase the size of the web page right there to as big as I need it. You can also go into your control panel into the display settings and you can lower the screen resolution, change, customize the font size, the icon size, um, to whatever level you like. And by lowering the screen resolution, it naturally makes items on the screen a lot bigger. Now if uh, changing the built-in settings in Windows uh, still doesn't do it, there are uh, third-party uh, programs uh, called screen magnifiers that you can install on your computer that will really make items much bigger and that can also even read to you what's on the screen and one of those screen magnifiers is called zoom text zoom text has adjustable magnification the magnification goes quite large 4x you see 5x 6x 7x 8x 10x 12x the higher the magnification the bigger the the monitor you'll you'll likely want to get if you still want to read what's on screen 6x but in full screen magnification uh, we really have to move around the screen quite a bit more to see what's on there. But a program like ZoomText has a lot of different types of magnifiers. Line, lens, zoom Even a lens, lens that allows you to move around the screen and, and magnify what's under the, the mouse pointer. Document 1, Microsoft. And what you'll see with a program like ZoomText zoom is that as you overlay full for shortcut zoom window full even as you increase the magnification you don't get that pixel pixelation uh, that you would for example with the Microsoft magnifier so it is a lot smoother and more crisp even at, at higher levels and Reader tab. if reading emails or web pages or documents uh, is still taxing even at high magnification uh, zoom text has the option where you can turn on a reader program that will read uh, your email or a web page for example so if we want to read this document, we can use the Zoom Text um, app reader to read it out loud to us, and it will highlight the words as it goes along. App reader A advances, advances in technology have opened new opportunities for people who are blind and partially sighted to be fully independent at work, in school, and at home. On the market today are optical scanners that read print closed circuit television systems that magnify print or pictures, and an array of devices and software that work with standard personal computers. Uh, much like John was showing you on a Windows-based computer, the Macintosh computer also has some built-in um, features that assist individuals that, who have low vision. Currently, the docking sy system on this station is on the left-hand side, but we can position it anywhere we want. I'm going to put it on the bottom. And also with that docking station, I'm going to change the size of the uh, icon so that they're as large as possible. And you'll see them pop up down at the bottom as I do. And once we do that and need to select any of our um, pop-ups on the docking station, they become nice and large. We're going to go into the system preferences. And in the system preferences, we're going to go to universal access. And the universal access has features that um, allow individuals with disabilities to modify their computer so that it better fits their needs. As you can see on the universal access panel, there are four areas, scene, hearing, keyboard, and mouse features that you can alter to better uh, make the computer function as you need it. Uh, the first one is voiceover, and much like John showed you, this is simply, by turning this on, allows the computer to speak to you. And then the next feature that we're, I want to show you is called the zoom feature. And the zoom feature um, is uh, just what John was showing with zoom text and some of those Windows XP settings as well.
Uh, that's a feature that allows you to uh, magnify as long as large as you need the text on the screen. Uh, another option that you have with the Macintosh is to alter the display. Um, we currently have it set on black and white. We can change that to white on black, much as you've seen uh, before. Um, we can change the contrast level of these with sliders depending on what programs we're using and how much contrast we're going to need. All of these features are, can also be done with shortcuts. They don't need to be done on the display panel. It just depends whatever system you're more comfortable with. We hope you enjoyed uh, today's episode on assistive technology for low vision. And we want to remind you that if you're interested in checking out these devices, you can give us a call at 549-7420 and make an appointment to come into our demonstration center and give these a test drive. For more information on the technology you saw in today's episode, you can visit our website, www.ccatc.org, and click on Curve Cuts, where you'll also be able to view today's episode with audio description. We'd also like to invite you to come and see the world of assistive technology that's going to be at a local show here in San Luis Obispo on May the 31st from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Veterans Hall uh, on Grand Avenue in San Luis Obispo. So if you'd like to learn more about assistive technology and services for folks with in, uh, disabilities and uh, just general information, please come on by. We hope you enjoyed today's episode and we'll see you next time on Curb Cuts. Mm -hmm.